All right, here's the last topic here. Purple, blue, red motor neurons. Right? They're going, leaving the spinal cord. Their axons are going out and innervating the individual muscle fibers and within a fascicle right here. Okay, and then these are color-coded nicely. So you got these blue ones, purple ones, and orange ones right here. These could be just reflecting this, but they could also be indicating something else, right? All the red one, all the orange ones are a certain type. All the blue ones are a certain type. All the pur purple ones are a certain type. So what are we talking about with types? Here's where we get into that fast and slow skeletal muscle fibers. And these are the two sort of opposite ones. There's intermediate that probably make up more of your muscles, but these are the two ones for anatomy we'll talk about just because they're easier to talk about. Okay, so there's fast and slow skeletal muscle fibers. There is structural, that is anatomical differences between these, and there's functional characteristics, these when you look into it, right? So the big thing is, is that your fast fibers, that is the one that are fast twitch. And again, you'll learn about what that means in physiology. Um, these are very big, right? large in diameter. They're very thick. Their energetics are anaerobic. That is, they don't use oxygen immediately when contracting, which means if they're not using oxygen, they are pale because of the lack of or the relative paucity of blood vessels, as well as myoglobin. Myoglobin is your muscle version of hemoglobin. Here, the hemoglobin that carries the oxygen, right? That's what makes muscle red. And so that's why white meat, which is full of fast fibers, is less red. Right? And so all these have to do, not this, but these, the less, fewer blood vessels and less myoglobin, as well as fewer mitochondria, have to do with the fact that these are anaer anaerobic, right? So these produce very fast, strong contractions, but they tire out quickly due to the fact that they're anaerobic. Slow fibers, on the other hand, are those small ones within any given muscle tissue. They are highly aerobic. That is, they have lots of mitochondria. This is basically your dark meat, right? So you have a lot of blood vessels, a lot of myoglobin to make it red, and a lot of mitochondria because they're highly aerobic. And so all this has to do with the fact that it's aerobic. And they're slow, as their name is. They, they contract at a very slow rate, but they can last a lot longer. Right? So white meat, dark meat is the easiest way to think of it. You think of a chicken, right? It can, if it needs to, fly up on top of the hen house, right, very quick, but it's not going to fly south to Canada like a duck, right? So a chicken, the breast meat is all white. It's all fast fibers. Where if you look at a duck that flies long distance, its breast meat is full of these slow fibers that can last a long time, right? And the same thing, a lot of your postural muscles, right, your soleus, and a lot of your back muscles there are these slow fibers. And a lot of your things like your pectoralis major and other ones that create a lot of power are going to be those fast fibers. A lot of them are mixed and they have intermediate fibers, which confuses things. But for anatomy class, that's what you have to know about these fast and slow fibers. The distribution in any given muscle is different. You'll usually have a mix. Uh, there's a genetic component to this as well. You know, some people are just naturally, they have more fast or slow twitch fibers or more intermediate. And, you know, the difference is marathon runners have a lot of smaller slow twitch fibers, whereas a sprinter or a weightlifter or something might have more fast twitch, large fibers. All right, I wanna mention a couple things. Again, how much am I gonna test this on? I don't know, but it is important for your own life. Again, just like the bone mass thing, right? I wanna just wanna, I, know I, I do get a lot of questions on this, so I do wanna go over it right here. When people talk about muscle growth, right? They're usually referring to hypertrophy, right? You look at this guy on this side versus this side, Obviously, muscle, he's got more muscle mass on this side versus this side. And as I said yesterday, there's two kinds of people interested in how muscle grows and how to get bigger muscles. It's weight, you know, bodybuilders and chicken farmers, right? Because farmers and everything want to get big, a lot of meat on their chickens and cows and stuff. So they do a lot of studies and they see what makes muscle grow and what happens when you 
gain muscle. And so you could have two scenarios. You could either take these two muscle cells and this guy and have them divide right, to increase the muscle mass, or you can increase the diameter of each muscle to make them twice as big, right? And for everything that's been shown, it's for the most part muscle hypertrophy, that is the cells themselves are getting bigger. Okay, they're becoming more packed with, well, we'll get to that in a second, but they're getting bigger in some way. The reason they don't divide, uh, muscle cells are very long, right? And they, those kind of long elongated muscle fiber don't divide in two, right? They, that's just the nature of muscle fibers. Right? They just get bigger in some way. So they could get bigger by packing in more protein elements, or they could increase the amount of sarcoplasmic fluid or other organelles that would make it more efficient, right? So what it turns out, for the most part, at least from what I've read here, is that you pack more each muscle fiber in with more of those contractile elements, right? The more contractile elements you have, the stronger you are, right? And that's why these, usually hypertrophy is a result of this excess or extra myofibrils. So just real quick, as muscles are growing, remember they're, they could be a foot long. They don't just grow that way. They're a result of a bunch of muscle, smaller stem cell type uh, muscles when you're during development are gonna fuse together to form these long muscle cells, right? So when you fuse together, each one contributes their own nucleus. And for our purposes, what nucleus are doing are the instructions to build protein. And what muscle nuclei are doing are building actin and myosin, right? To build that internal structure. I mean, that's what they're doing a lot of, let's say. So, but the more nuclei you have, the more easy it is to build more protein, right? You also have left over in the adult muscle cell, these stem cells called myosatellite cells. Right, and they stay with you for life. And in response to some kind of injury or maybe stress-related uh, workout, if you work out a lot and you're creating stress or some kind of inflammation response, those myosatellite cells start, become activated. They divide a lot, become more, and then they, they could help repair it. And then they will add onto that muscle cell. So if you started out with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nuclei. After this, you'll have these four more, right? Added to the muscle cell. So that's good. And here again, this is not anything I'm gonna test you on, but it's good for your life to know that um, if you, when you go training and stuff, one thing that happens is you increase the number of satellite cells in those muscle fibers. And again, the more satellite cells that it become incorporated here, the more nuclei you have in that muscle cell. The more nuclei you have, the more actin and myosin you could build, right? The more of those sarcomeres you can build. And the good thing is, is that those nuclei, when you go into quarantine or whatever, you stop training, right? Those nuclei, even though your muscle gets smaller because you lose actual contractile elements, the nuclei remain. So that when you do go back to training, you'll build it up a lot faster, right? So the blue line here was what the saying, years of hard training. And then once you get back into it, you can get back into shape pretty quick, right? This is what they mean really by muscle memory, right? Being able to uh, regain muscle that you've lost. One thing that happens when you get older is that those stem cells, which are normally activated as needed when there's damage, right? Uh, or stress related when you're exercising and stuff, they'll grow and grow more muscle cells and you're able to regenerate and grow more muscle. As you get older, it's a slowdown. All your, this happens all over your body that cells activity starts to slow down unless it's like cancer or something that speeds up or osteoclast. Um, but all the good stuff starts slowing down, right? So when you do get injury or when you're trying to grow muscle, um, it's a lot slower right? This whole self-renewal and proliferation is slowed down. So you get less fiber generation. It doesn't stop. You could still grow muscle, but 
the whole thing is slowed down due to these stem cells kind of activity slowing down, right? So poor recovery from injury as well. When you hurt something, it takes a lot longer to heal, right? So as you get older, all the nuclei activity starts to slow down, right? You decrease rate in protein synthesis, leads to less sarcomeres, right? Which is going to make your muscles a little bit atrophied, right? That's what sarcopenia is, muscle atrophy. And again, what I just mentioned there, the muscle repair is slower because of the loss and slower activity of myosatellite cells. In general, your vascularity is decreasing all over your body, right? Decrease in mitochondria, ATP, glycogen reserves, myoglobin, all that starts to slow down. All that is crucial for growth and health of your muscles and all that's declining, right? So overall, your muscles are become smaller and less elastic. So here's like a 70 year old dude. He looks okay from the outside. If you did an MRI of his muscle, you'd see a lot more connective tissue, fibrous connective tissue and fat instead of muscle on this, right? So what that does, fibrous connective tissue, this is often a result of, you know, when you try to repair, you start to build up fibrous connective tissue. Uh, what that does is it leads to less elast uh, elasticity, basically less flexibility restricting movement and circulation, right? Because remember that connective tissue is the good connective tissue when it's healthy, right? Is allowing all the blood vessels to go in. So these over here, these are some of the bullet points that I might ask for aging and the skeletal muscular system. But one last thing, more, my more myosatellites you have when you're younger and you could build them a lot easier when you're younger, the more you'll have to lose later, right? Because nuclei, more nuclei you have, right? Uh, the more protein synthesis uh, you're gonna have available to you. So just like bone, build it up now, you'll have more to lose.